Harry Sweeney, seven days on a training camp with a pro cyclist, cycling coach, reacts. Let's go. Precision Fuel and Hydration brought to you by. Thank you, Precision Hydration, for sponsoring. And thank you, Tree Frog suckers. Yeah, mate, that's not going anywhere. Should be right. <laughs> Harry Sweeney, what a bogan. True Aussie, mate. <laughs> What's up guys and welcome to Isola 2000. You're watching seven days at altitude training camp with a pro cyclist. Paranese finished yesterday and we drove up here today. We're at 2,100 meters here and it's bloody stunning. Uh, packed the car full of stuff, got the skis here. So it should be a good couple of weeks and I'm excited to show you guys around. So let's get cracking. So 2,100 meters altitude, that's pretty high altitude. What This was uploaded four months ago. So this was around May. And he's here for a, f a couple of weeks. Interesting. So like I said before, today's an easy day on camp for me. So if you guys don't want to see you today, feel free to skip through to the other days. I won't be offended, but yeah, today I have a day off the bike. So I'm taking the opportunity to get out into nature, walk around the mountains here. It's absolutely incredible. Today I'm walking up to the Italian side, Col de Lombard. And then just go for a bit of a cruise back down the mountain. Nice. Active recovery. Should be good. Active recovery day to start off. Uh, still going to be getting some central adaptations because he is at altitude. But the thing here is, it doesn't look like a team-based altitude camp, which is what we see most of the pros do. This looks like it's just him and his mate going to altitude for a couple of weeks. One thing I will say that he hasn't mentioned yet, but I would be surprised if he hadn't done is something that he's going to have to do before the training camp, before he gets to altitude, to make sure he's going to get the most out of his time at altitude. And what is that? What should he have done before he got here, or the team have done for him? Any guesses? Blood test. Blood test. Most important thing, really, in preparation for an altitude camp. When you're going to altitude, when you're doing an altitude camp, you're going there to get an increase in hemoglobin mass. Hemoglobin is the component of the blood that carries oxygen to form new hemoglobin requires really good stores of iron in the blood and that's tested by ferritin that's the measure of it in a blood test so i would be very surprised and a bit disappointed if harry was going to this altitude camp without having a ferritin test sometime in the last two months to make sure his stores are good Usually this would be run by the team. A team would have a team coach or a team physician who would be scheduling this in. Harry going up here is on. I don't know if he is doing it. Usually you would do a ferritin test about a month out before the camp starts. Have an idea of where your body's iron stores are. If they are lower end, so above about 60 micrograms per liter, you may, you may bring in iron supplementation in the lead into the camp to bring the iron stores up in the body before you get there. If you're in the healthy range but not upper end of the range so let's say between 60 and 100 you may just bring an iron supplementation the week before the camp starts and then throughout the camp taking a moderate dose of an iron supplementation and if you're above uh if you're above 100 uh, micrograms per liter you may only be doing supplementation at a moderate dose throughout the camp but i'd be very surprised if if harry was just winging this without having his ferritin tested before and I'm not sure if, if he is taking an iron, uh, an iron supplementation throughout the camp. Maybe he'll get onto it. But yeah, anytime before altitude, test your ferritin. You're not going to get the response in hemoglobin if iron stores are already low before you get there. And in which case, you're just wasting your time. He'd be better off at sea level. So ferritin test. It's um, actually a little bit balmy walking up here, though. Only an undershirt on. I don't know how many degrees it is, but I'm working up an absolute sweat. Especially at altitude, it's really important that you take a few days to let your body adapt to the new surroundings and the new environment, all the new demands that you put on it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, taking it a bit cruisy today, even though it doesn't seem like it. And then, yeah, tomorrow get stuck back in, maybe a couple of hours easy. So today's a bit of a cruisy day, haven't really done that much. So after the travel, I'm always going to do a little bit of stretching because I'm a bit tight and also, yeah, after pain, ease my body's a bit of a shell. So first things first is this stretch for the psoas and the hips. Hip flexor stretch. Bit of a dynamic one though. Cool. Oh, it feels good though. Yeah, this Shout is all... Um, Blake Bickler finally doing some mobility the other day. call it placebo. 
but it's just making yourself. He's trying to make himself feel better in his body, so that he can train better on the bike the next day. So is this directly, specifically doing anything? Arguably not, but it makes him feel better. He's feeling better on the bike the next day. More productive training, so it's it's a win win. He doesn't. He doesn't do especially much. driving. I hate driving. Sitting even sitting in the car for about three hours does me in. So yeah, if he if he's been driving around, definitely first time in four years, I think. Cap more of a an activation oh, strength okay. and exercise. You do this before a ride, but I also do it after. No, I wouldn't do it before a ride in my routine. No, I do it as more of a stretching routine as he's doing here. Nice. <laughs> Sorry. Lociento. All right. This one, hip flexor and stabilizer for your hips. Another super important exercise. Uh, Second last one. Kettlebell swings. As a whole, I'm, I'm not really big on most of this stuff Man, in terms of having a training benefit. Again, I'm big on this stuff if it just makes you feel better, it's not doing any harm. But I wouldn't be doing these sorts of activation type circuits thinking that it's going to be directly improving performance on the bike or strength in any measurable regard like that. If you want to do it for activation or to feel better, go for it. But this is not strength training. You just love talking about it. It has nowhere near the benefit that an actual strength training session would. <laughs> talking about gods. I personally I feel like a lot of riders that I see waste time doing circuits like this thinking that it has a strength benefit or or um, an, a pre-ride activation benefit when I don't think it does anything there's not really much evidence for that um, more for strength training oh, final exercise doing some exercise ball pikes oh. Oh, sorry didn't mean to flex on you there <laughs> <laughs> And that is your core and activation. I'd be doing more releasing work personally. Yeah, I didn't seem right to be doing that. Yeah, so I'd be doing more. What I prefer personally, and I find helps a lot, is 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 releasing type work. So getting into a massage ball, massage gun, maybe even a foam roller, that sort of thing. Finding tight spots in the muscles, rolling them out, I find does help me feel better on the bike the next day, more than any sort of stretching or activation type thing. So surprised you didn't do any uh, trigger point style releases that's what i usually recommend but if it makes him feel better that's, right, so that's a wrap for day one um didn't have great success this afternoon trying to teach jacob how to ski um <laughs> it's an absolute pearler of a day got some scrambled eggs on toast for brekkie and a bit of muesli wash it down with the coffee nice cheese today i've got two hours easy on the program right. just endurance zone bike riding and i've been getting heaps of questions from you guys about planning on the bike nutrition and this is even more crucial when you're at altitude you never ever want to run out of fuel when you're on the bike training so i'm going to show you guys the app that i use yes yes but that i mean that applies globally i don't, I don't see a reason why that would be more uh, crucial at altitude not to to under fuel um, that would be the same for a training camp at sea level as well. Under fueling impacts recovery. It's going to impact the amount of total load you can do throughout the entire camp. So whether you're at altitude or just doing a sea level training camp or even just an overload week in a regular training, uh, adequate fueling is important across the board. Just to plan my training, particularly on hard days and altitude, but just going to show you to get the hang of it on a two hour easy day today. Start by planning the two hour routes. Drive a route builder. Mountain basically. Big, big down fan. To Isola, and then straight back up. 40 kilometers. It says estimated moving time one hour 14, but that's just cap because it's 1200 <laughs> meters vert, but done for that one. Okay, Strava I'm going to go around. on to the Eat My Ride app. This is a completely free app, so you guys can download this one too. I'll drop the Eat link in ride. the description. Okay. Going to plan my ride, import my route from Strava, Isla up and down, okay. continue, recovery training, intensity, probably not super high, say 210. Put in the power Create output. plan. Okay. So then I'm just going to fill in... One liter an hour because I'm at altitude, so I want to drink a little bit more. I'm going to okay. drink two bins of water, and then probably so he's adding the fueling plan. Two bins there, precision fuel With sixty. The precision product. Say one more water. So then my default, I need to change that. I'm at altitude, so I want to eat a little bit more carbs. So I'll shoot okay. for about eighty grams an hour on a two-hour ride today. For an endurance and ride. For a pro. Yeah. So eighty grams an hour on an endurance ride for a professional athlete 
is, um, yeah, that's relatively high, isn't it? 80 grams an hour to ride at sort of 200 watts or 220 watts for, for Harry. would be barely even in zone two. So, yep, upper end of the fueling for sure. Smash and choose. Why not? Jeez, be good to be a pro. Four says it? it's enough. You just have all... <laughs> he's just got all the precision uh, precision fueling products and get as much as he wants without worrying how much it costs. That's pretty 80 sick. of 80 per hour with okay. my mix. And voila, my nutrition plan for the day is complete. And that is going to download straight onto my Garmin when I sync it. Okay. can see my carbs, energy level, and my total glycogen usage That's or nice. estimated. Okay. And we're done. It's estimating, it's estimating his glycogen usage throughout that ride based on the power he's put in and then his relative to his FTP. Okay. Okay, we'll see. Uh, he uses this throughout the video, so we'll see. The only thing is estimating fuel usage at a given power output, even if you know someone's FTP, is really an estimate anyway because that's one of the individual fluctuations. Different athletes, if someone's more fat adapted, someone's more carbohydrate adapted, They'll burn, even at the same power output with the same FTP, they will burn different percentages of carbon fat. So uh, that'll also d change depending on fueling. You know, if you carb up the night before, your carbohydrate oxidation the next day will be higher. So again, that, that would be an estimate. I, I am not sh I'm not convinced how accurately that app could be predicting it unless you could input your um, metabolic testing data, which the pro athletes would have if they got access to a lab, they could input, okay, at 200 watts, uh, regular conditions, I'm burning X percent fat, X percent carbohydrate. But I, again, I don't think they're doing that for this app. This is, would just be an estimate. Now my nutrition plan is downloaded. I can show Interesting. food plan. Okay, so this is a Garmin so IQ app. Eat my ride, have the, the app loaded in Garmin. So he's inputted it into the app and now it's going to tell him with reminders on his I have to eat for the day. Cool. And okay. then also on my drink plan and too, drink you plan. can see exactly what I need to drink. So let's get cracking. Today's target's pretty easy to hit. Just two bottles of mix, four mm -hmm. for me. Do you want a couple? Yeah. Well, couple well. for Jacob. Thanks mate. Sorted Thanks. for the day. Let's go baby. Hey guys, it's f all day. <laughs> Sorry, pardon my language. So here you guys can see the Eat My Ride Garmin app. This is the calorie and carb balancer. So on one side, I have 86 grams an hour. That is my live burn rate. Okay. Next to that is my total deplete. Live burn rate, 86 grams of carbs per hour. Right, so at his current power output, it's telling him how many carbs he is burning per hour. Interesting. Okay, so he can see sort of how yeah how much of a, in a debt he might be so Oops. 34 grams that's my total burn offset by the amount of carbs that i've eaten okay. so it's really valuable to see how much your body's depleting under here average burning grams per hour so that's just my average for the ride not super high just because i started with a descent next to that is average intake so i'm aiming for 90 an hour and I'm at 78 at the moment, so okay. Okay. that means I should probably have some food soon. I okay, so it's just a way to track throughout the ride how much glyco uh, yeah, how much carbohydrate or glycogen has been burnt, how much he's eating, and then just giving you a, a gauge on how to keep that in track. I, this, so far, this looks pretty good. Again, this is always going to be an estimate because everyone burns different amounts, has different fuel uh, usages, but good to be having this sort I'm of insight. going to click add food. Going to oh, get a bar. Okay. So Precision then, fuel and hydration chew. Okay. Take that. Interesting. And you'll see over here that's boosted my carb intake to 100 grams an hour. Ah, and as that cool. digests into my gut, it's going to offset the depletion. Wow. Pretty sweet tech. Cool. Yeah, what that is What do we good. reckon? Yeah, good. Here we are. Back from Rico Ride. How are you whipping up something? Sun dried tomato pasta, bit of parmesan cheese. Forget to get really Chicken, close tomatoes, to pasta. We just got back from training now. Even that meal there isn't that high in iron. I mean, chicken is meat, but isn't isn't that high in iron. So that's why I would be interested if he is supplementing through this, because um, you know, even just for lunch, this isn't a particularly high 
Fight Iron Now, So I'm going into the Eat My Riot app again and check the details. So you can see here, did one minute more than I estimated. Pretty damn good. 9K more, intensity 238 watts average. And then this is everything that I ate for the day. So three chews, had some drink mix, another chew, some water, another drink mix. And gets me bang on 80 grams an hour and had two liters of 2.2 liters. So pretty close to. Then I can see my energy burn. So it okay. was almost the exact same as what I had planned. Energy distribution. And then this is just a rough estimate of. 34% fat, 60... Oh, no, 66% fat, 34% carbohydrate. So that's, that's what they're estimating. Cool. With the distribution, so 144 grams of carbs burnt and about 124 grams of fat. Still have a good lunch because we're at altitude. That's what's more important. Looks delish. You're joining us for day three on training camp. I know you probably thought the last few days looked easy. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, it was. So today the real work starts on camp. Oh, yeah. Got three hours endurance, nice. heading up some mountains, up Col de Bennett, 2,850 metres maybe. The highest pass in Europe allegedly, so let's have a good day, get some work done. So today's session climbs at Fat Max, so cruising up about 280 290 <laughs> we are about 4k of 25 okay. up in it i think we're about to hit a bit of a roadblock climbs at fat max okay so that's a bit of a, a mm, it's a bit of a buzzword i mean if you've gone to if he's gone to a lab and they've done metabolic testing throughout a, a submaximal ramp test and they've found out what power out he utilizes the most amount of fat because as the power goes up, uh, carbohydrate usage will go up, and then the and so does the fat utilization, and then it will start to drop off, and the carbohydrates take over. So that point at which your fat oxidation is the absolute highest is your fat max. That's your fat max power output. Now that the fluctuate again, that fluctuates depending on the rider, so it needs to be tested. But usually it's it's kind of upper zone two, maybe into zone three, that sort of range. So he's doing fat max intervals. It's, again, it's a buzzword because it doesn't really mean anything. It basically just means he's doing upper zone two low tempo in efforts up the climbs. So zone, yeah, that's what we can just call that. Calling it fat max, I mean, he's not doing it fasted. So he's not actually doing it at fat max because he's fueling it with carbohydrates so that he can recover from the session and complete the training camp to a high quality. So if he was actually doing it at fat max, he may be doing it fasted. Now, he's obviously, that's just not a good way to train. So he's not going to do that. But calling it, yeah, fat max intervals when you're fueling it with carbohydrates is basically just doing tempo intervals. For, Say la vie. For those of us that train with zones. The live burn rate okay. really start to go up on here as I start to shell Jacob. <laughs> Sitting at about 250 grams an hour. So you can sort of start to get an idea 250 grams of an how hour. important okay. it is to constantly eat when you're racing because you can never catch up. I don't know what power he was sitting at there. 250 grams an hour oxidation's very high. Um, I'm not sure how, I mean, I don't know what power he was sitting at there. That might to constantly influence eat the live burn when rate. When you're but... racing because you can never catch okay. up. Anyway, yeah, that's, okay, that's a good to point. To constantly eat. Let me just you go start back. start to get an idea of how important it is to constantly eat when you're racing because you can never catch up. That's a good point. I mean, you can only absorb a certain amount of carbohydrates uh, per hour, depending on the carbohydrate source you're having and how well trained your gut is to absorb it. So, and how intense the training is while you're consuming that carbohydrate. So you can only absorb so much. Now you can go out and just ride at 400 watts. You can't ingest the amount of carbohydrate to sustain that power output. So obviously the carbohydrate burn that's going to show on this head unit is it's not really a target because you can't eat, you know, if you're oxidizing, if this says your total carbohydrate burns 300 grams an hour, you can't eat 300 grams of carbs an, an hour to, to, make, to keep up with that. So that's what this app is kind of doing is tracking all that fluctuations of power across the ride and then also taking into account the times when you're doing less power and then so you can try and keep that 
at least throughout training, in balance. Obviously, in a race, you're never going to keep it in balance. You're going to be in a debt at the end of the race. That's just, that's just how it works. And that's why carbohydrate loading is also important. So you're starting off with a bigger fuel tank. So it's always going to run empty, but it gives you more gas before it runs empty. Back, baby. Chuck the drone up. Look at this. Wow. So we're back from training now, and you can see there's my total kilocalories burnt today little bit less than planned and then my energy distribution so today I was targeting fat max on the climb so you can see 61% of my energy came from fat and about 39 came from carbohydrates that is 229 grams of carbs and 157 grams of fat and obviously that's a little bit different because one gram of fat has nine calories versus only four for carbs so that's why the different split there and then my glycogen usage, I never really went into the red here, which is really good. When I'm at altitude, obviously you don't want to do that at all. So kept my energy levels up the whole day and things are looking good. I mean, again, I mean, you ideally want to try and avoid that no matter the um, altitude that you're training at. Nice little recovery. afternoon activity, bit of a hike into Italy for sunset. Looks all right. Bon app, dinner is served. <laughs> got a big day tomorrow, so we got fuel up for that. Jesus some nice focaccia, Christ. roasted lamb, oh and some gnocchi to finish it off. That's... Coach told me that I have to fuel up big for tomorrow, so okay. let's load. dig in. And that is signing off for day three. Stay tuned for day four on camp. I mean, lamb I ethically don't agree with, but we're not going to go into that. We're talking training here. Let's go. Next day. Oh, Vegemite. Yes. Welcome back. You're joining us for day four on training camp. Today we have four hours on the program, a couple more climbs. I think we're doing about 3,000 meters today, so wow. Jacob's going to be a bit <laughs> by the end. Uh, nutrition wise, today we're targeting 90 grams an hour. Got a lot of chews and some gels to eat today. Oh, we're uh, going up to mountains. All right, 16k at 7%. How are we feeling? Oh, oh dear. That's a proper burg. A couple of hours day. in, average burn, 93 grams an hour, okay. 21 grams depleted. Can't be that intense. Average intake, 82 grams. Okay. Tracking yeah. pretty well. Jacob and I signing off on the first one hour. Fat max, there we go. 57 minutes, 299. Lacked. Here we are at the. So you see, my ride app it does appear pretty useful. I mean, Personally, though, it's not really rocket science. I mean, in most of these rides, as you can see, he's already he's doing 80 grams an hour as a base kind of training ride, whether that's endurance or even endurance with some, some fat max or zone three efforts, upper zone two. So anytime he's going to be doing efforts above that, he'll be up at 120 grams, maybe even a little bit higher an hour. So... I don't really... Look, if you're a pure beginner and you need those reminders, I think the app's good. But it's not... I mean, fueling training isn't rocket science. It's... You hit your number per hour for your for your standard type ride. He's, he's doing 80 grams an hour for most rides. As soon as it goes more intense than that, you're on the upper limit of fueling anyway. 120 grams an hour. If it's really easy, if he's cruising around 180 watts, maybe he drops that down to, say, 50 grams an hour. And that sort of thing. Do you need an app to tell you this? I mean, I personally, I don't think so. But if it helps, it helps. Um, but I mean, God, we should be able to do this sort of thing, get this fueling right without having that app um, remind us. It's my opinion. The brew shop. Lovely day out. Not much snow, as you can see. But uh, making the most of it. Always important to keep the, f the fluids up. Perfect Coke. <laughs> this could be the world's best coffee, let me know. No. Yeah, it's not great. No. <laughs> Just having a quick call with the crew back home. Signing off on a pretty solid day. 274 norm and 102 grams of carbs depleted. Okay. 
Interesting. So long. Uh, let's go back. Let's go back. And 102 uh, grams of can't really see the off screen. Pretty solid day. 274 norm. And 274 normalized. That'll be in his zone two. That's probably even really mm, lowish zone two um, for for Harry's. Very very strong, and he's in 100 grams of uh, 100. 100 grams of carb depletion. On these long rides with sort of tempo efforts, you're going to be depleted at the end. It's just, that's that's not an issue. I mean, that's where the app sort of comes in handy, I guess, is a reminder of even though you've you've eaten 80 to 100 grams of carbs per hour on this five-hour or four-hour ride, you finish it, A, actually, you're still depleted. And if you want to go out and train well the next day, he needs to make up for that depletion and keep the carbohydrates coming in throughout the rest of the day. So we can start with that glycogen tank on that chart uh, up nice and high for the next day. And then continue on again. Because, yeah, what if he didn't? What if he only had 60 grams an hour here? Suddenly, then he's looking at a, a 300 gram depletion. And then, what if dinner's not that carb heavy and he forgets to eat? And then he's starting the next day with only half a level of restored glycogen or even a, or even a third. You know, because that glycogen storage um, is quite big, but takes a lot of food to fill up, a lot of carbohydrates to fill up. So, you know, and then he starts the next day. And then that compounds. And then what, what, where's his glycogen going to be after the next day if he goes out and does another four-hour ride with some efforts? And you can see it's very quickly a race to the bottom. So if an, I know I said you probably don't need an app like this, but if, it, if it's a good reminder, then and it's two useful. two grams of carbs depleted. It's good to visualize. <laughs> Jacob's in a body bag. I might just die here. Other thing I will, uh, I will say just about this carbohydrate refueling, he's on a training camp, which means... He's trying to cram in a heap of training. He's probably not going to have many rest days um, or light days to recover, which makes this all the more important. If you're someone that's training three or four days per week and you're having multiple rest days per week and you've got that sort of 48-hour window for your glycogen to recover, it's not as important, really. Because if you go, you go do a big session on Monday, you don't ride again till Wednesday, you don't ride again till Friday, you're not you're going to struggle to to deplete your glycogen and have that not refilled. So just flagging that there, there's really high levels of glycogen recovery are drastically more important when you're on a training camp. I'll lay down and die. <laughs> oh, it's not looking good, bro. <laughs> it's quite <nice cooked. laughs> oh. Day four, remember? Yeah, I'm feeling good though. Tomorrow's gonna be my best day yet. Two one hour efforts. Just fat max though. Yeah, for you. So, okay, the, he's fully cooked. So he's probably very glycogen depleted after this ride. So what should he do if he wants to try get his, his legs back as best as possible for the next day? So he's probably gonna look at one and a half grams of carbs per kilo of body weight in the hour after the after this ride. So he's getting started there on the Haribo. That's good. I'd probably also get some in through the, some carbohydrates, carbohydrates in through the fluids. And then he's probably looking at, you know, a gram of carbohydrate per kilo of body weight, almost per hour, really, for the next four or five hours in the day. And to get that in, he's not going to get that with solid food or he's really going to struggle to get that with solid food. And that's where fruit juices, carbohydrate drinks can really help that have the glucose and fructose in them. And be getting that in hourly. Like he almost needs to be, <laughs> you know, when you this glycogen depleted, if you want to ride the next day, you almost got to be on like an IV drip of carbohydrate. Now you can't, that, that's against the rules. You can't, uh, you can't, there's no needle policy in, in pro cycling, but um, you can, you almost got to, that's the mentality is you got to be drip feeding yourself carbohydrates in the what? How many hours before he goes to bed? Six or seven hours before he goes to sleep? So windows are short. He's getting up the next day. He can have his pre ride. Uh, breakfast, pre-ride snack, that'll help bump up the liver glycogen, but you've only got, he's probably got five or six hours to restore his, to eat, to fuel, to restore his muscle glycogen overnight. So, yeah, he's on the clock now. <laughs> Zone four for me. And I would say 90% of the time, people under eat in this exact situation because they don't realize how many grams of carbohydrates they need to have to get that glycogen level back up. So, yeah. Let's have a look at my numbers. 
Lunch is ready, some lamb, some feta, a bit of balsamic and making some wraps. Jacob's absolutely boxed over there, trying to recover. So that bottle Since should have a uh, carbohydrate drink in, they should be sipping that every hour. Carbs in that, also got a bit of rice on the pot too. Eat a bit of that. Sorted. <laughs> Poor fellies. <laughs> Five hours on the tools tomorrow. Time for some pizza for dinner. Gonna try and recharge Jacob's carb stores. I'm not sure how well we're gonna go with that, but we'll give it a whirl. <laughs> try as you might. <laughs> Well, we reckon Pizza's Italian good, two nights in a row. But um, it's the in-between. It's I'm the in-between it. that's going to make Can't wait for someone to tell me in the comments, that's not traditional Italian pizza. <laughs> <laughs> pizza number one. Back on training camp, day five. You guys are about to experience one of the realities of being a professional cyclist, and that is eventually your appetite will run out and you'll have to eat rice and eggs for breakfast five hours on the program today <laughs> very common yeah <laughs> now, i'm not a pro cyclist but i've been especially in stage races i've hit similar things or even big big training weeks i've hit you know similar things where you just you don't feel like your, your main meals your regular meals they just they just yeah it's unappetizing so um you know if i was if i was harry and the appetite was starting to wane Okay, well, you don't need to force down rice. There's other foods you can eat with protein and carbohydrate that probably go down a bit easier. Things like, uh, I like yogurt. So a fruit yogurt can be good. Even fluids, like um, up and go or sort of meal replacement drinks can be good as well. Um, yeah, things like that, that just are easier to get down, easier to stomach, less fiber are going to help it in these really tough moments where your guts are just not keen on a, on a regular meal. Forcing down, you know, boring rice. Yeah, it's boring. It's rice. There's other things you could be eating, I would say. Trying to fuel up the best I can, but we'll see. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do, eh? You do got to do what you got to do. Rice, eggs, and olive oil has got me through a few tour stages, I'll say that much. On app. <laughs> right. One hour. Two hours. Three hours. Four hours. Even cereal or something like that. I, uh, that's what I would probably be going to as opposed to sort of eggs and rice. Five hours. Be day on the tools. <laughs> We've got 7.3% for 14 kilometers. And I have six by two minutes. Six at twos. 470. At 470. Okay. Yeah, baby. Let's go. Not riding fat max today. Interesting. Six by twos. Okay, the, I can tell you that the glycogen <laughs> freaking debt thing is going to go uh, absolutely bonkers. One down. Accidentally got a bit carried away with that one. 507. 500 watts. <laughs> 10% more. <laughs> uh, it's all good. Five left. Ah. Can't be that hard, right? Well, you got to keep them all there now. That's the, good, that's the thing. If you go that hard in the first one, you've set the priest. So you got to keep going. So because he's at altitude, it's the, it's the, the training volume and and the altitude stimulus that is giving the increase in in the hemoglobin. Uh, the the intensity ne obviously needs to be there because if he goes up and just rides zone two and a bit of fat max, he's going to go back down to sea level to race and he's just not going to have the leg. So he does need to touch some intensity in training. But you can see it's not a massive seven six two minute efforts off the back of a bunch of hard days with barely anything, even at zone four or above. Um, so yeah, just a little sprinkle, if you want to call it, little sprinkle of intensity just to maintain, uh, almost just to maintain the muscular system and the VO2 max, really, just a touch. But six, you know, a ride with six two-minute efforts isn't anything too crazy that you'd be doing at a like a sea level training camp. Five two-minuteers at 500 left then, I guess. <laughs> Take it away. Go fuller. Here we are, Gruppetto. <laughs> Three, two, one. Oh no. no th this one I'm gonna go easier. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't look like five hundred watts. Wow. That's why Harry's a pro. The the tortoise and the hare. Pretty good. I actually followed orders that one. 489, so. Kept it under wraps. Yeah. Other thing he might do actually no well it doesn't look like he's doing it because it looks like he's at the top of a climb 
but it wouldn't be uncommon for a rider like this to uh, descend back down into the valley, do the two minute efforts at the bottom at sea level or closer to sea level with more oxygen available. That'll allow more power output during the actual intensity and then ride back up for the rest of the ride and back to the, the hotel they're staying at at altitude. So very common, the sort of the, the live high and then you go back down and you train low. Um, so that would come into play in a session like this where he's doing efforts at zone four and above um, to get the power output up. Otherwise, you know, he goes, if he's at altitude for two or three weeks and he hasn't been down below 2,000 meters for his rides, you know, his muscular system isn't going to be used to producing the five, 600 watts. So you, you will actually get a detraining at that upper level of power output. Now this session will go away to stopping that happening um, but yeah, if he, if he was doing them all at, let's say, 3,000 meters of altitude and in the two-minute efforts, he's only doing, say, 500, uh, 450 watts, he goes back down to sea level <laughs> in a flat race and he's going to be doing 600 watts to close a gap in an echelon, he's going to get blown out the ass. So that's why the training needs to be, is, is important along with the altitude stimulus to make sure that he's not gaining in the altitude stimulus in the hemoglobin and then losing in the actual... Uh, upper end of power output so got to keep them in balance <laughs> bro that's someone's totem <laughs> last day of the week for you guys and today on the program i have four hours endurance with three lots of 10 40 20s these ones are going to be pretty solid three so 10, 10, gonna knock these out so three sets three 10 minute efforts and those efforts are 40 20s um, again, big fueling day here. He's going to be in a uh, yeah. He's going to be in a glycogen uh, deficit after this ride, using the Eat My Ride app. Uh, so he'll be again when you're in that. You're going to have that deficit anyway. You need to be doing upper efforts, upper level of the fueling that you can tolerate. And so three tens. That's not really a VO2 max or, or maximal aerobic power session. This is sort of a FTP session. Get a bit of time in the sun and then ride back up to Isola for the afternoon. Put my feet up. Hope you guys enjoy. I wonder how many hours he's on now. It's been like, uh, he's got to be nearly 25, 25 hours on the bike at this stage. That's a big week, yeah. At altitude. It looks like he's still at altitude. Again, I, I mean, if I was sort of, had an athlete doing this, I, I would be telling them to go down the valley to do the the three 10 minute sets and then you know go over the climbs and enjoy the, the altitude for the rest of the ride i'm not sure where he did the actual efforts in terms of altitude so this is probably the highest intensity session that i've done so far this week and i'm just going to give you a quick look i haven't been super good this hour i tried to catch up on my carbs and as you can see i'm already two hours in i'm already 124 grams depleted so yeah. that's what happens when you're not really on top of your carbs as much as you should be. And you can see that it's really, really hard to catch up. So yeah, gonna have to smash some, some more chews. Might have to get a Coke from the servo, try and catch up on that so I don't hit the wall on the uh, climb This back is home. interesting actually. Okay, so he's, he's okay, couple of things. Um, firstly, because he's doing the efforts in the first part of the ride, it's gonna be hard to eat the upper level of fueling let's say he's aiming for 120 130 grams an hour while doing the efforts because your body's not going to be able to absorb it as well as when the intensity is low anyway so really we two hours in in that sort of debt to get that uh debt back more positive again he's going to have to spend it's just it's really a matter of getting the fueling in and then spending more time at a low intensity so instead of maybe he was gonna he's done let's say he's done two of his 10 minute efforts and he had a third one maybe instead of doing that third one given the dead he's in, cruise around for maybe 20, 25 minutes at zone two, maybe stop at the servo and get some more carbohydrates in, give himself sort of 45 minutes more at a low intensity with the fuel coming in, and then start that third effort with not as much of a debt. And also, and also giving his muscles more time to have the carbohydrates available to fuel that effort as opposed to sort of like doing, just getting through that third 10-minute effort, and then you 
two hours and 15 in- minutes into a four hour ride and you're already kind of on your hands and knees, that's when you're really potentially getting into an unproductive level of fatigue for that last hour and 45 minutes he'd have to do for the ride. So I would say smart call here, just delay the last effort, go and extend out that recovery time, get the fueling coming back in, then keep ripping in. And this is where an athlete needs to be, um, to have the knowledge to make calls on their own. I mean, you can't be two minutes, two efforts into a session or whatever he was in two hours into a session and be calling up his coach, coach, oh, I'm feeling a bit off. What do I do? It's, you can't, these decisions have to be made on the road. And that's why as a rider, you need to be informed on these things because you need to make these decisions yourself. Um, this is a decision where going off what was scheduled, going off the plan is probably going to result in a higher quality session and better recovery for the next day. And unless you're aware of how the, what the intent of the session is, how you're meant to be feeling and fueling during the session, it's going to be harder to make these calls on the road. And that's the difference between, say, an amateur just blindly following the plan, following what the workout says, and an experienced elite athlete who has the knowledge to make these calls on the road day in, day out to get more out of their training. Cool. All right. Thanks, Harry, for that video. That was great. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it, learned something along the way, and I'll uh, catch you in the next one.